Hey guys, welcome to another Game Explained discussion. I'm your host, Andre Seegers, and this time we're joined by Derek Binder and Ash Paulson to give our predictions and expectations for Nintendo at E3 2016. Oh, and we're going to discuss a few new Zelda Wii U rumors we've heard too. So, let's get started. Alright guys, E3 is fast approaching, and as we all know, Nintendo's a bit of a different show this year. So, uh, in fact, it's so different, we were really struggling to wonder if we were even going to do this this video. <laughs> because it might be a little bit shorter than what, what than how it normally would be. Although, knowing that's it probably won't be, it'll probably end up longer. Um, anyway, so, first off, a quick rundown of what's happening this year. Nintendo is not having a digital event. Instead, on day one, being Tuesday, they're kicking things off. Uh, with a Treehouse Live stream. In fact, that's all they're doing this year, basically, is Treehouse Live. It starts at 9 a.m. on Tuesday. It's going to have an intro by Reggie fils -Aimé, um, and then it's going to start up, then it's going to follow up with a live gameplay playthrough of the new Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. After that, they're going, they're moving on to Zelda. It's going to be all Zelda Wii U all day, as far as we know. Um, after that, on day two, they're actually going to show off a few other games. Um, they're going to be starting off with a Q&A for Pokemon Go. Then they'll be showing off uh, other games, including po uh, Monster Hunter Generations, Dragon Quest VII, and Tokyo Mirage Sessions, uh, Sharp FE. So, um, that already actually is a little bit more than we initially expected from Nintendo's first announcement what they're doing at E3. Uh, so before we get into the nitty gritty, how are you guys feeling so far about this? What what do you think about everything we know about E3 so far? Now that we've had all this time to process um, Nintendo's plans for the show, it's just well, it's... <laughs> sad. <laughs> it's just it's just the, the the fervor isn't there for me this year. You know, it's just and and I mean I'm over the, the NX not being there. That's you know I've I've made peace with that, but. The fact that it's going to be only Zelda playable, as far as we know, and then them mostly covering games that are coming out very soon, or within the next couple of months, aside from Pokemon Sun and Moon, it's just like, eh. it's just yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know I'm I'm hyped for Zelda. Once when I'm actually sitting there playing it and actually learning about this new game, I know I'll be really excited about that. But that being it, it just kind of makes me sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of feel mostly the same way. I mean, we know what to expect. That I think that's the biggest disappointment for a lot of people. There's no surprises, at least as far as we know. We all, There's always that little part of us saying, well, they could still surprise us, they could still do this, but I think a lot of people have become reserved to the fact that, no, this is pretty much what Nintendo is showing us. And, you know, it's not bad. I mean, we still get Zelda, we still get Pokemon, I mean... The fact that we're getting live gameplay of Pokemon is pretty pretty big. It's not just a trailer, um, and I'm you know personally excited for both Dragon Quest Seven and Tokyo Mirage Sessions, even though I kind of, kind of already have it in hand. But still, <laughs> it, it does feel I mean, a, little, a little bit like old news, right? Because it, it has been out in Japan already for the last few months, even. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's funny because even though there's an English translation now, it doesn't feel that different from the Japanese version, at least to me, because we don't have English voice acting. I know that's a uh, conscious decision on their part, but still. But yeah, I think that's the biggest th takeaway from this, is that uh, why a lot of people maybe don't have the excitement for Nintendo this year as they might otherwise, is because we don't. there's nothing unknown. We it, know everything that's going to be going to be there. And that's a weird thing. That's never happened before, as far as I know. We've never known going in what Nintendo's going to be showing off, um, at least officially, like, uh, at least to this extent. They've never given their whole plan, essentially, for the show. And, you know, we've had those discussions before where we were all disappointed with their announcement. And luckily, at least since they talked about Zelda being at E3, they've since expanded upon that, which is good. Um, just you know, they didn't expand that much. I mean, the Pokemon stuff is great, but beyond that, it's nothing terribly exciting. With that said, I've, I've come to terms with it. You know, I've, I'm still... It's weird that I don't have, like, much hype going to E3 in general. However, at the same time, I actually am legitimately hyped to see Zelda. And the fact they are putting such a focus on it, I think... I want to think means it has to deliver on those expectations to some degree. This game has to be amazing, I feel like. <laughs> it may not be. It very well may not be. But I feel like I feel like there's a good chance it will be. Especially given the fact that it seems like they really are taking the feedback to heart from the last several Zelda games. And I think they're finally learning and, you know, using that as a springboard to try out all these new ideas. Especially given the fact that it's also going to be essentially an advertisement for the NX. Even if the NX won't be there, uh you know, physically there, or even really talked about. They, you know, Nintendo did say they won't be talking about NX. 
You know, Zelda Wii U is basically an advertisement for the NX, because we know it's coming to that platform as well. And actually, you know what? With that, I'm going to give my first prediction. Uh, which, there may not be many of these. <laughs> but my first <laughs> prediction is, even though Nintendo said they won't be talking about NX, they will in fact talk about Nintendo NX, even if to a very small degree. I think there will be some mention of the NX, because they have to. Zelda's coming to the NX, um, they're going... And here's another prediction. We're going to find, finally find out what this game's called. We're finally going to know what Zelda's called. Oh, yeah. And yeah, they, and as t and as part of that, they are going to talk about the NX to some degree. I don't know how little or how much, but they are going to mention it. But I think they they need to start getting out there that this game isn't solely for Wii U, it's for the NX. I mean, d does does predicting that we're going to find out the new Zelda's name does really count as a prediction? <laughs> At this I mean, point, I feel like what else do we have to go? Hey, such a hey in. don't you don't you know, you can't judge my my <laughs> predictions until I hear yours? Okay, that's true. I guess that's true. But yeah, you know, I mean, we'll definitely get the name. I think my fear with Zelda tentatively is that it is going to be amazing, but it's also going to be very divisively amazing. I'm actually really worried that that this this new Zelda is not going to be the Zelda for me. Because because Ooh. of what we you know think we know about it going in, I mean there seems to be, you know, open world is the thing these days. That seems to be what they're going for with this game, possibly. And if it is, I'm not sure. Is as amazing as it'll be for that audience, I'm not sure I'm really going to warm up to it. I'm a little worried this this game is not going to be for me. Everybody has to cater to you, don't they, Ash? Obviously. <laughs> how how I, entitled, man. There's right? yeah, good old Ash entitled yeah. Paulson over there going at that, it again. That's true. That's, that's See, me. I, I, I mean, think it's going to be divisive for another reason. If they hold true to this whole rumor of having a gender option for Link, I think that's going to be pretty divisive. I think any sign of voice acting is going to be divisive. Some of these big changes we heard about uh, you know, leading up to this whole point, uh, those are going to be the divisive ones. I think the open world stuff might be the stuff that's most accepted by a lot of people because people do like open world games. That's there is a reason right. why The Witcher and and uh, Fallout and Elder Scrolls do does so well. Why people are hyped over GTA and people really want to hear about a new Red Dead Redemption. Uh, you know, because people like those open worlds, they want to experience. And I think Nintendo could do very well using Zelda to tap into that market. And I, I, I've only completed one open world game in my entire life, and that is Red Dead Redemption. So it's not like I have a huge affinity for that genre as well. But I can, it does sort of fit because of the original Zelda, which is why I have no real problems with it going down that route, as long as they're able to structure it in such a way that still engages me. And I think that's why I'm, I'm for the demo itself for Zelda, I'm pretty excited because I feel like this is going to be a massive demo that we're going to get to try out. I really feel like it's going to be like, okay, you're dropped in, here's a quick tutorial on how to use your buttons, go. Yeah, I mean, we already yeah. know, I mean, it already came out, we didn't talk about this ourselves because I tend not to disclose, you know, our all of our appointments. But it, was, it did come out that Nintendo was booking 90-minute segments for this game for the press to play it. Uh, and that is a lot for a single game. Nintendo has never done that before, as far at least not in any recent years that I've been to E3, like in the last 10. Um, they've always done like a generic boost tour where you can play, you know, basically wherever you want. But seeing as it's just Zelda this year, they're devoting all that time essentially to that game. And that is a ton of time. Um, I, I should clarify... Uh, the, these are the 90 minutes is split up between a couple different appo appointments. Uh, at the most, I believe it's only about an hour at a time. That's still a long time for a single game, which does yeah. lead me to believe that this is going to be a different demo than what Nintendo's typically done. And I like I'm just wondering they're just going to literally drop you into this world. Like maybe you can choose where you want to go, but who you know they're going to drop you in like yo go crazy, <laughs> just <laughs> go, go ride your horse wherever you want to see where go where the wind takes you. That would be. I mean, depending on how how they structure this demo, it could that could be really impressive. And and yeah, I mean, obviously, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, wow. Of course, we really don't know really anything about any anything concrete about this game. So really finding out for the first time and sitting down and playing this game is going to be surreal. And I'm definitely hyped for that. Um, I think it's just what I I don't know. I, I just think thematically, I'm I'm a little worried about what they're going for. But that doesn't. Wait, you know, thematically, what do you mean? Well, thematic, I should say, well, maybe more structurally. Like I said, the open world approach will work for a lot of people. I'm just not sure how I'm going to feel about it in Zelda, but I'm open to it. The you know, uh, open of course out. you're open to an open world. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I'm open to it, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I totally get where you're coming from, because I also am not a big fan, so to speak, 
of open worlds just because they are, they so often feel like they're not even designed. Like it feels right. like they just plopped down trees and bushes just randomly and just created this gigantic area that doesn't have space much space for the, the for the sake of having space. Yeah, exactly. I and mean, I just yeah. I said that in our video recently, my top 10 hopes for Zelda Wii U. At the right. same time, you know what? It's different. Zelda needs to be different at this point. I'm I'm done or I'm cool with not having a completely structured linear experience anymore. Um, and if going more open is what enables that, great. But they also need to learn from what other from the missteps of other open world games. And I do want there to be more content in this world. Like, I, you know, if this world is just a naked field where, that just connects to different dungeons and towns, I'm going to be disappointed. So <laughs> I do hope that there is more, and I think there will be, um, because Nintendo usually does a pretty good, good pretty good job, like with Zelda games in particular, filling it with uh, with stuff to do. Not so much in the case of Twilight Princess, but I'm going to try to refrain from bashing on that game too much in this discussion. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> I feel like you do go back to Twilight Princess just to hammer in yeah. why you don't like that game every discussion yeah. about Zelda. But, I, no, I, I agree. I think, I think Nintendo is, for the most part, pretty smart about how they design things, especially stuff done by A.J.I. Anuma. Uh, he, you know, he has a very good eye for how to design things and keep things well structured. You might not agree with his overall push towards it, but I still feel like, you know, Skyward Sword had fun moments. Uh, Link Between Worlds is a great game. There are, you know, there there are still really great design elements to Zelda, even, you know, if you don't like the game as a whole. And I think to taking into that those account and having this sort of idea and the fact that they're themselves saying how it's a different change in the same vein as Ocarina was such a step forward, um, I, you know, they, they there's a sense of confidence behind Zelda, even you know, it, with it being the only one and how much they're showing off and whatnot. I feel like it won't be. There's no chance of it being empty in that way there's there's like i said there's a sense of confidence to it that we don't see from anything else about this show for nintendo and uh i am I'm, I'm looking forward to it under that uh pretense now my other expect I, I don't know if it's an expectation or just anything like that but I, I do wonder do you think we'll finally see link in his traditional green garb because it's been blue this entire time and i gotta say i am so used to him being in blue that I'm honestly think feel like I'd be a little disappointed if he switched to the gr the tr traditional green outfit at this point. I don't know. I don't think we'll see him in his traditional green attire, but I do think we'll find out the context for why he's dressed the way he is in this game. I think we're going to get a lot of you know background information as to you know what kind of high rule this is, who Link is in this game, and why he's wearing the clothes he's wearing, and and kind of you know just a general. I think we're going to get enough to form a general background for what's really going on in this particular installment, you know, when the game starts. I have seen uh, some theories out there, or not theories, but, like, just ideas that maybe, in almost all the artwork and almost every time we've seen Link, like, he's been, he still wears that hood in general. And people are wondering, like, are they purposely, like, disguising what he looks like for the unveiling of it being, of there being potentially a female version, or... It's, it's strange. I mean, I mean, Link has always been somewhat androgynous looking, but never so much as he is in this game. Yeah. And I feel like that that's probably intentional because I, I do personally believe that we are going to see a, a Link this time around where you can choose his or her gender. And, you know, however you feel about that personally and whatever, I think the the art is is definitely intentional in terms of being more androgynous than usual for Link. They, they, they may go that route or I'm still not... Or they may just go like a, a different character route where maybe you play as a female character for different circumstances in the game. So, either way, I think there will be a playable female character. I'm just not sure which which direction they're going to take it. I kind of, I don't, I don't, I have a feeling that they're going to take it, you know, in the direction of the rumors we talked about a while back, which yeah. is that Link, you know, you're going to have a choice. And we, you know, we talked about why we are and you know, are for and against that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I tend to believe that, that a lot of the rumors we discussed a couple months back are going to end up panning out. It just feels like that's going to be the case this time. Um, I don't, of course, who knows? We could be completely wrong, but it, it, it's going to be surreal. I mean, it's, it's, it kind of reminds me of how we finally felt when we, you know, we, we knew about Skyward Sword's existence for a long time before we actually knew it was called Skyward Sword and what that game was all about. And I feel like we're getting that again this time, but to like the umpteenth degree, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I almost think like this is going, this is kind of acting as 
like a Zelda reboot. And I think in order to do that, they need to do things differently, whether it's by having an open world, having uh, a character select or a customization or whatever. And as I mentioned in our hopes video, I think this might be the time when we get voice acting. Yeah, I, I think I think voice acting is going to happen. And something else I think is interesting too is that the the most uh, the the newest piece of Zelda key art that we saw very clearly shows Link being right-handed, which is unusual um, in that he's usually left-handed. And really, the only exception so far has been for Twilight Princess's you know mirrored Wii controls. Right. So that's interesting to me. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I, I can't extrapolate that enough to be like, okay, that means we might be getting motion controls again because I don't necessarily think we are at least not for the sword, but it is weird, though, that, that Link would suddenly be right-handed again, unless it's not Link. Like, that... that like, it shouldn't be a big deal, but it kind of is, because Link is, is <laughs> for, his, for as few character traits as he has, one of his most defining traits has always been that he's left-handed. What if the female version is yeah. right-handed and the male version is left-handed? <laughs> that would be really <laughs> weird, but sure, okay. But, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. even though that, that seems like the kind of thing that, like, it's like a little fanboy detail that shouldn't matter, I feel like that is it kind of is a big deal because Nintendo that's that's not the kind of thing they would just forget oh yeah Link's you know always been left handed oops that's gotta be there's gotta be something to that the only canon Link that's been right handed is Skyward Sword Link I mean technically Twilight Princess Link is not right. because of the whole mirror thing but uh, Tw Skyward Sword was designed with right handed Link in right. mind because that's why I meant Skyward controls. Sword I don't know why I said Twilight Princess yeah and if, um, I mean very well might be that I mean we've, we've talked about this analysis before like this maybe that is a huge Link so to speak uh, to to Skyward Sword, like maybe it has a direct connection to the Skyward Sword lineage. Perhaps, it, maybe. yeah. I mean, maybe this is the transition to how he became left-handed, and he starts out. He actually turns out to be a. Um, uh, I forget what the name the name of it's called, but when you can use both hands. Oh, uh, ambidextrous. Ambid yeah, he's ambidextrous, yeah. and he starts out right-handed, but then he finds out he's stronger left-handed and switches over. That should be the game story. So Zelda Wii U and NX should be all about Link's journey to becoming left-handed. That's it. <laughs> like, who cares about the Triforce or Ganon? Just, how did he become left-handed? That's that's the question everyone yeah. has answered. <laughs> well, the bit of lore I'm most uh, intrigued by is that dang book that he has at his side with the Sheikah symbol on it. I really hope that they they are going to dive into the whole lore of the Sheik, and I think I do think the title of those of the game is going to be based off of that book. And I, I don't know. I like I, I'm a I'm a sucker for story, so of course that's what interests me, but. I don't know. I'm I'm very curious to see what kind of tale they're going to sing. Or is it going to be a direct sequel to Skyward Sword? Uh, or are they going to say no? It's in this timeline. Or all of a sudden there's a fourth timeline and they would drop that yeah. into it. I, I'm kind of getting the sense that it is going to be like that. This might be taking place like kind of after Skyward Sword in the sense that this is like a a new a new land. This is Hyrule as it appeared before it was settled in all the games that we see after it. Like I feel like this might be taking place after Skyward Sword and before the next game in that timeline. Who knows, but that's definitely been... I'm definitely getting kind of a sense of, like, colonization from what we've seen. You know what I mean? Like, the the land seems wild and untamed, and and you're exploring, basically, and you're, and you're kind of seeing what's out there. That's a good point. Well, maybe this is a good time to launch into some of the rumors that I've heard. Uh, very recently, by the way, and I should specify, I'm, I am hearing these secondhand, but it's by a very reliable source. Now, there's nothing really super mind-blowing here, but I think it could be fun to explore. And touching on something you touched on, Ash, the thing I'm hearing is that this game is going to have a fantasy versus technology um, theme. And specifically featuring robots. And we kind and that kind of ties into what we've seen a little bit already with the um, that stone-like enemy running around in the field chasing Link. Which did appear to have like that same uh, blue energy that we've actually also seen before in Skyward Sword with the uh, the time crystals and those robots, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this one's kind of like a no duh. <laughs> it really does feel like it. Like anybody could come up with that one just because of uh, the, what we what we have seen before and what we've seen evidence of. Wow, shots but fired. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody come up with that? I mean, I mean based I, on well, I, mean, I think I, mean, I know what you're saying, but I think I mean saying it's fancy versus technology is very different than just having fancy and technology. True, but the the thing that the other takeaway I have from this is it really it kind of does feel like that go, like drawing inspiration from the very first Zelda because one of the design elements for the original Legend, Legend of Zelda was a more sci-fi themed. Uh, a, 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 
storyline where you know they had Zelda in like as a space princess type thing. And I don't know, I, I find it kind of funny to th imagine them going back to those roots where we have kind of future tech in there and, and like taking inspiration from those kind of ideas and like having it literally battle the fantasy ideas that Link has had up to this point or the Legend of Zelda series has had up to this point. It's probably not going to be that. That's just my own crazy mind going going off to a completely different place. But I, I do like, it, there's a lot of media out there where it's, you know, uh, technology versus nature and, you know, it, it works. Well, so. and maybe Link's book is the gateway to that. Maybe it does have like the Sheikah symbol on it and it has like the blue, the, 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 it shares the same blue color as like the energy we've already seen so maybe that's like how it takes control of like some of these technology features or it, maybe it, it uh interacts with them in some way because i pointed out before when you look at that book and who knows if it's even really a book it does look like a book but it has like it almost looks like it has a terminal or something on it or a bottle opener if you will like, it almost <laughs> looks like it can plug into things uh, an interface, and maybe that's your interface. Oh god, it's it's like it's like Penny's book from Inspector Gadget. Oh my god, that's <laughs> it. That's awesome. Oh man, god, I want that now. Yeah, I know, right? Wait, no, just to, just to play devil's advocate, we are we are theorizing a lot about you know specific story elements and where they could all fit in. But you know, AJ Onuma has gone on record several times saying, you know, story is great and all, but we really designed the gameplay first and then just wrap whatever story we can come up with around it. So mm -hmm. I don't think they're going to change that approach for this game of, uh, of oh all God. games. I think it should be I, noted I, that I haven't yeah. once mentioned story yet, and it's for that exact reason. <laughs> I really don't care. The story could be whatever. Like I'll be interested in it, but it's clearly secondary to the game. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about stuff like the blue energy from Skyward Sword. Like I, I, I find myself wondering if those things even cross the minds of, of you know, AJ Onuma and his team. I feel like a lo I feel like a lot of the, the way Zelda fits in timeline wise is kind of a happy accident. Oh yeah, and yeah, oh, yeah. and and I, so I I feel like us talking about all these things and like oh yeah, Skyward Sword this and the Blue Energy that and I just I, I find myself wondering if that even crossed the minds of, <laughs> of them, um, you I mean, know. Go ahead, it might, it, it totally might, because they might have like, okay, these are the design elements how we want. What kind of connections do we want to have from this? It's like, okay, we can have them powered by the blue energy from Skyward Sword. That'll work, because we sure. already have that established, or that, that whatnot. And I think they want to see where it ties in where, and then that's like, okay, it looks like it best fits here. They just want to pop it into the timeline. Yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, obviously they're not going to be focusing on that in any major way, but it's still, I feel, I don't feel like it's completely haphazard in how they structure it. I mean, yeah, it's like, I mean, it's like how Twilight Princess also, again, focus on the gameplay, but they had a whole backstory with the hero of time or the, you know, the skeleton guy, whatever his name was, who ends up being the original hero of time, right? Which is still weird. To it me. is weird. Yeah. I agree. It's weird to me too. I'm not even a big fan <laughs> of that. But yeah. that aside, I mean, it shows that you know they do think about it on some level, even though the gameplay sure. has come first. Okay, uh, I should get to a couple of these other rumors real quick. There's not much left, just so I can stay on this topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Another rumor is that there are going to be four large dungeons, but and this kind of ties into my hopes video again. Uh, there's going to be over a hundred mini dungeons scattered all over the world. Which is, I mean, yeah, I mean, that that definitely falls in line with kind of, I think, my passive expectations for what they're going for with this game, in terms of just of, of exploration being the theme. It's just, it feels like that's what's going to be the case, and it is, I mean, that, that gives me a Majora's Mask vibe, uh, the, the only, there being only four major dungeons, which is kind of strange, and that does really feel like too few upon first thought, but, you know, if you think about it, if they really are massive dungeons, and then these mini dungeons are, you know sizable challenges in and of themselves they could work out yeah i like this idea on paper uh the idea of only four major dungeons that they can go as complex as they want or as easy as they maybe made a little bit easier since they can sort of nudge you into it and maybe having the mini dungeons being a lot more complex or anything like that but here's the thing they need to make me care about going into these mini dungeons. I'll do it, but give me yeah. a better reward than rupees or stuff like that. Like maybe going into this dungeon, like it's it's completely focused on the boomerang, and when I finish it, I get an upgraded boomerang. That sort of thing. Like you, it's great that they that they might, according to this rumor, have mini dungeons, but I want to have a purpose for those dungeons. Here's my and thought. That's the key. My thought is, well, speaking of keys, my thought is that those mini dungeons may serve as the keys to the larger ones. Maybe you have to find a certain amount of smaller dungeons to get access to the bigger one. So, like, you find some kind of, like, you know, piece of something in there, and you need, like, 25 of them to open the first dungeon, for instance. Hmm. I did not 
consider that. That's not a bad <laughs> idea. But then what? It, here's the thing: would it, would that be would that feel like busy work at that point? It could. I mean, yeah, it depends how they do it. I mean, I think if you know, I think if you just like if they're all like that freaking cave I was talking with Ash about in Twilight Princess, where you <laughs> have to go bomb like twenty different walls, it, probably even more than that to find your way through. Yeah, I'm gonna hate it. But if they make like if if these aren't just caves, like if they actually are like mini dungeons, like kind of I'm thinking along the lines of like that. Um, you know, when you're at uh, Jabu Jabu in Ocarina of Time, and there's like that ice dungeon, that little ice dungeon right behind him. Mm-hmm. You remember what I'm talking about? It wasn't oh, like yeah, a whole dungeon, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know I think exactly. Things of that scale, like I think that could be awesome. Like they're still stuff like, like that stuff, like the well. And yeah, the exactly. Yeah, like, they're like yeah. you know somewhat puzzle focused, and maybe not even necessarily. As I mentioned, the hopes video could be like maybe someone could be combat focused. Like if these switch it up, I think that could be awesome, and that could build up to like the larger dungeons, which. You know, if there's four of them, first off, that's awesome because it matches how many were in the Majora's Mask, which is one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. <laughs> and I think that could be great. Like with the if, because I felt like Twilight Princess had. Well, okay, maybe sorry, I don't want to beg in that game anymore. Some Zelda games have too many dungeons <laughs> where like it feels like it to me feels like it's too much of them. Like it breaks up the pace. If there's only four of them, I think that could be great. Put all the emphasis on those four dungeons. Go all out with them, where like it really does feel like a full experience you're getting in that one, and then you can move on, where you go back to the smaller, maybe better paced ones with them being mini dungeons. So I don't know. I'm very intrigued by that. If that is, if that ends up being true, I agree that that on paper it sounds like a good idea, and I do think it could work. My main concern with this potential setup, and I think it's one that's mainly going to be, uh, like Derek will feel the same way. Maybe not you, Andre. Is that I having only four main dungeons with everything else being potentially optional makes me worry that there's going to be very little actual story content or that what story content there is will be spaced out a lot between these four main dungeons with all these a hundred plus mini dungeons having no bearing on the story whatsoever that you're just literally exploring with no context and that works for the gameplay only crowd and that's and that's a, a viable crowd i'm not i'm not trying to you know say that people who only want gameplay out of Zelda are wrong. That's not what I'm saying. But there is a crowd of Zelda fans, you know, that Derek and I are part of, that we really do care about the lore. And I wouldn't want that lore stretched so so thinly out across four dungeons, and that's it. I agree with that concept, but I, I, I don't think... I mean, if we're going off four dungeons and it immediately brings to mind Majora's Mask, if they can have this huge world with all this exploration available and all these dungeons, but also have the ability to talk to like patches of villages along the way, and you just uh-huh. run into these villages, and you have different missions for them as well, and getting more lore out of them, I think that's a way to solve it. It might not be toward building towards the main plot, but you might be sort of like Majora's Mask, getting a sense of this world, getting the sense of the people in it, seeing how they interconnect, seeing how maybe your if this is t- taking place before the Kingdom of Hyrule is f- firmly established, seeing how you bring all these disparate people together to form sure. Hyrule. That, that ha- leads to a lot of potential. Now, that is also me just, you know, completely coming out of this out of nowhere. But if it's structured like that, we could still potentially have story in it. Not a guarantee, though, because this is Nintendo and they are kind of story-averse at times. So we'll see how this goes. But I feel like if they're going for a Majora's Mask vibe... That would be the way they would handle it. Yeah, I think sure. it's possible to have story, uh, but just divorce it from the dungeons. Like they don't have to be tied to the dungeons. So yeah, that's true. Just when I think of four, when I think of four main quests, I think of an or four main dungeons. I think of an open world with a ton of content, but very little actual story mission based content that you know that actually that you have to hit the the, the major story beats the required stuff. It's it's kind of like the lightning returns approach where there's a ton to do, but the story itself in such a huge game is actually very short and that mm. disappointed me about that game because I wanted more actual story, more lore because it was the, the final chapter of that series. So, you know, I, I feel like there is a potential here where there, there's this huge game where there's a ton to do, but the actual story content is stretched very thin. That's just total conjecture though. And then, and also for me, a worst case scenario that might not even happen. Again, this is all conjecture based on very little that we actually know. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Final rumor I've heard about, this isn't even a big one, but maybe, um, it's just that there will be different weather patterns. Now, I know at first it sounds like, well, that's nothing, but when you think about it, Zelda hasn't really done that much with the weather. Like, they've, it's either been always been, like, preset, like in Majora's Mask or on Day 2 it always rains, for instance, or in very limited circumstances, like when you play the song of, um, 
was it is it the song of time that starts to rain or the song of storms song of storms song, song of storms, storms yeah. yeah i should know that this guy's elder shirt with that this song on it so, <laughs> yeah um but you know so i wonder if they're going for uh if this if this might be like a real-time weather thing if they're going all into that you know might have some influence on the world maybe like i don't know if you plant something and it grows and it rains who knows but i wonder if they're gonna be playing around with that more especially if they are trying to make this like a more like a more realistic world maybe i mean i i'd love to see uh like going like walking through the woods riding on a pona and uh, all of a sudden it starts to snow yeah i think that would be very beautiful that could be really me cool. too and i mean and i think it's totally i mean we've seen that in, in other games as well so uh, whereas it might be new for zelda it's, it's not necessarily that new in general so i think it's something yeah. that i could totally see happening that's mm-hmm. true. It's not that new in general. That's, that might be why it feels a little bit like what I mean. We yeah, there wasn't much context for that specifically, mm-hmm. but yeah, who knows what direction they might take that in? But maybe weather is. It does seem like it's going to be a, a bigger focus. All right, yeah. that covers that covers all the rumors I heard about. Um, do you guys have any other predictions either for Zelda or should we move on to or do you have any more general Nintendo predictions for the show or expectations? Yeah, it's more expectations. I actually more of a question for you guys about your expectations specifically. Here's the big one. They're having this presentation. They're only doing two days worth, so most of the bit, the other predictions that most of the other stuff that they're announcing that's not Zelda and Pokemon is going to be on day uh, day two, unless they do it on day one. They could still sneak it in there because this would be huge. Do you think they'll actually announce Mother Three? See, that was my question. That's <sighs> that's the big question mark for me this year for Nintendo. Zelda we know is happening. Pokemon we know is happening. Tokyo Mirage Sessions, whatever. Mother Three, what's going on? Like a few months ago, I would have I would have bet money that that they were going to announce Mother Three D three that it was just going to happen. It's just because you know the Emily Rogers rumors. You know, it just felt like it was going to happen. But now that you know, I mean, they say they don't have any surprises. They they say we know what we're getting at E three from them. That's what they want you to think. That way, it will I be know. Surprised. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping if if they surprise us with Mother Three, that alone would be like such a huge deal for me for Nintendo Z3 this year. I want there to be one surprise, and I want that to be it. I really do. Yeah, uh, so I said on the Nintendo Dads podcast last night that I don't think they would announce Mother 3 at E3. I think it's something they might sit on now until their next Nintendo Direct, perhaps for the fall, late summer or fall. Um, And I I still think that's the case. But I do think, this is actually one of my predictions, I think there will be... I, I don't think we fully know all of Nintendo Z3 plans. In fact, I'm 99% confident there will be more on that stream than what we currently know about. Whether it'll be big or not, I couldn't tell you. But I do think there might be more, and you know, maybe it is Mother 3. So um, I do think I don't think they fully announced every game they're gonna be showing off. Especially given the fact we know Rhythm Heaven's coming out here, right? But they haven't even shown that off. Yeah. So that'd be a great, that'd be another great stream game. Yeah, I suspect yeah. they have having Mega Mix for Tuesday. Or not Tuesday, but uh, the second day, Wednesday. Yeah, they, they've only announced, I think, three games for to be shown on that stream. And that's... Uh, they, they, and Pokemon Go. So. Oh, you're and right. Yeah, Pokemon thing. Go. So. Yeah, and that's a so, QA thing, so they're not really showing anything. I don't think they can fill a full day with just those four, unless, they, unless the stream isn't that long. But is, is Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix the kind of game that people would tune into a stream to watch? I mean, yes, I would. But, I mean, <laughs> I and maybe 50 other people would. I mean, is like, Tokyo Mirage Sessions... I feel like even that has more appeal to the anime RPG crowd than than a really niche rhythm game does, you know? Yeah, I, that's true. I mean, I almost feel like with Nintendo, nothing's off limits. <laughs> that's true. I just, I mean, yeah. it's, 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 as excited as I and other fans are about Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, I just don't feel like that's the kind of game that Nintendo's like, hey, come and tune in to the Treehouse live stream to well, watch that's, and that's why they Mega didn't, And that's why they didn't advertise it. <laughs> right, that's true, yeah. Now, Mother 3, I feel like, could have that kind of pull. Well, it would have that kind of pull, just because of, you know, just the, all, all the they overall have to say, legend surrounding it. All they'd have but, to do is, after Pokemon Go, stay tuned for a special announcement. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. it, yeah. It, it's weird, because, I mean, they've already missed the 10th anniversary of Mother 3's j- Japanese release, so some people thought they might do it then, it didn't happen then. Then there's the fact that Earthbound Beginnings was surprise announced and released at the uh, championships last year. So, you know, in terms of parallel announcements, it makes too much sense for them to announce Mother 3 at E3. But if there are no surprises, then that leads me to believe that maybe they initially had plans to, and then they're looking at the Wii U lineup for the rest of the year, and they're like, well, damn, we already have Tokyo Mirage Sessions coming out to satisfy the RPG crowd this month. 
and we have nothing else coming out for this system for the rest of the year except for Paper Mario, maybe we really need to space Mother 3 out a little better. Which is really sad when you consider that you're talking about a really a game that ultimately is fantastic but has really niche appeal and is a Game Boy Advance game. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is true. That is a good point. I yeah. still feel like it would do really well just because of the sheer curiosity at this point. Me like too. People, yeah. people just like hearing all the time about how you know this people want this game was like, yeah, I'll check it out. Sure, you know yeah. that sort of thing. But actually, that uh, does bring up a good point, though. That, I mean, it's not the, it's not the type of game they're going to showcase on a stream. I think you can't play Mother Three for like half an hour or an hour on a stream. I mean, um, you can if you can I play mean, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, well, you can. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but it's... Well, okay, I meant... Well, I didn't get the full context of that statement. Because this game is, like, ten years old, at least, now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. it's a GBA oh. game. They're not gonna... All they'd, have to, all they'd have to do is air a trailer on the stream. Like, cut to that same sort of thing they did before, where they, yeah. like... The, the, the way they revealed Earth, Earthbound Beginnings, it was during the, uh, I believe, the championships. And all they did was cut to Itoi, talk about how he's ta had his experience with it, and then it's like, okay, here's Mother 3. Do you think we'll even get any this. trailers? Like, it sounds like it's all going to be live stuff, except for Reggie's statement. That's the thing. Like, the, yeah. we just don't know. This is a completely unprecedented E3 for Nintendo. Like, the format's just so different. It is. And, and I think mm. that's maybe what's bothering me. It's not necessarily that, that we're only getting Zelda or only getting Pokemon. It's that we already know. Mm -hmm. Like, I would, I would rather have there been a direct... So, I mean, even though we we know, we could guess that we're going to get Zelda this year at E3, it still would have been nice to have the surprise, you know, and be like, okay, get ready for our first trailer. Here's the Legend of Zelda, whatever, and there there it is. I think it's the fact that we know everything because E3 culture is so predicated on surprises, I guess, and that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean it's the way it should be. I'm not, you know, maybe it's time for a change. Maybe yep. I I really don't know, but. You know, the, the the funny thing is, is that a lot of the games, the games coming out this year for both 3DS and uh, Wii U that are left are RPGs. I'm like, I'm trying to think of a non-RPG that's coming out later, other than Monster Hunter Generations is technically not an RPG, but we got the both Dragon Quest, we got uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Paper Mario Color Splash is an RPG. Like, this is the year of the RPGs because we've already had Bravely Second and whatnot. Like. What is going on that RPGs are, are like the last gasp of Wii U? <laughs> yeah. It, being Paper Mario, that's the other thing that I wanted to bring up really quick. Paper Mario Color Splash. That whole thing is so weird because, I mean, obviously they're pinning all their hopes on Zelda. All their hopes are riding on Zelda. I get that even more than usual because we're getting these hour-long demos. They're asking press to book 90 minutes. It's like, as you said, Andre, it's unusual, and they don't ever spend that much time on one game. So obviously Zelda's the big thing, but that's not coming out till March of next year. And the fact that they're completely ignoring their one other quote-unquote major release for the Wii U for the rest of the year, which is Paper Mario Color Splash, is odd. It's just bizarre to me. Like, that's yeah. the game that's coming out closer and sooner. That's the game that gives Wii U owners some hope of having something to play this year, you know, or something else new to play this year. And yet they're completely ignoring it in, in favor of a game that's, yeah, much bigger, but not coming out till March. Like, it's weird. It, it is. Also, no mention of uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah, I'm that sure that's too. by design. Which is coming out on <laughs> August. By yeah. the way, by the way, still no word about any kind of celebration for the big Zelda anniversary, the big Metroid anniversary. I believe this is the Donkey Kong anniversary. Only the anniversary that's been getting any news is, of course, Pokemon. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I think I think the symphonies, the Zelda symphonies, are they consider that part of the Zelda celebration? But but they've but been yeah, going on since the last celebration. That, that's also true. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's true. I, again, I don't think Nintendo's fully disclosed everything they're going to be showing off. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of these games do pop up in one form or another at some point during this two-day event. At least I don't know. Do you guys think it'll be a day three? They usually do three days. They've only announced two so far. Do you think there could be a third, or are we just getting two this year? Wouldn't it be weird if they just weren't, if they just went offline for the third day? Like, they were like, screw it, guys, we're done. What, they shut down the booth, too? Just yeah, right? <laughs> They're like, nope, we're done. So it's like a tumbleweed rolls through, and Nintendo yeah. is never there. Oh, God. I mean, the only th it's either going to be nothing, or, you know, they'll have a big announcement, that the, the announcement on the day of the uh, first day of E3 saying, okay, here's what day three is going to be. Mm -hmm. But do you think they want that kind of stuff? 
first, not last, you know? That's where they want all their big stuff, because that's where people are going to be paying it. That's when people are going to be paying the most attention. So my gut is leaning towards, no, they just have nothing for day three. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, too. I'm kind of thinking that, too. But at the same time, we also thought they it was just going to be Zelda on these streams, and they changed that on us, so... Who knows? <laughs> well, I, I will make one very tiny prediction and okay. say that if, if and when Mother 3 does happen, whether it's E3 or later this year, I still think it's going to be called... I'm, I'm just going to make a total guess, and it's going to be called Earthbound Legends. It's not going to be called Earthbound 2 or Earthbound 3 or whatever. It's They're, they're going to go with the subtitle thing, and Legends seems to make the most sense to me so more it, than it, uh earthbound endings yeah because it's not really if you play the game it's not really an ending so spoilers. much spoilers <laughs> yeah I, I mean it's not really spoilers either but yeah i know what you're saying but yeah, yeah no i, I don't I'm think joking, so but... yeah because because mother one actually is a prequel to mother two like mother mm -hmm. three isn't so much a sequel as it is like a follow-up not even the same characters right exactly yeah yeah so mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I'd be nice to find out more about Mother, but I do think they will sit on that until the next Direct, assuming it happens at all. I mean, I'm, we, we're assuming it is, and I think it still is, but I think it might be more of a Direct thing. That just doesn't, like, I don't know, that doesn't seem to kind of, like, when Emily Rogers is that confident in a rumor, it usually ends up panning out. Yeah, that looks in you recent know. years, that's true. At least in recent years, yeah. Um, I guess the only thing we haven't really touched on Nintendo-related, as far as I can think, well, I guess we, we haven't talked about Pokemon much. Uh, or at all, really. What what do you guys think they're going to show off here for that game? I mean, we know it's going to have at least a small part on the stream. How much time do you think they're going to devote to it? And what all do you think they might show? And what do you want to see? Well, here's the thing with Pokemon. It is that it, see, it feels like Pokemon Company wants to be, remain very tight-lipped. If they're going to show anything, it's going to be from the very beginning of the game. But that still offers a ton of information. We get better ideas about the rivals, we get a better idea about the opening Pokemon, because even just in that opening area, as we saw from that one trailer, there's a Pokemon hanging out just in the overworld that we could see. So it, just any little bit of footage gives a ton of information about Pokemon. Right. So my gut tells me that this is not going to be a very long presentation. We'll probably get enough to see the opening area, get a few more new Pokemon from the very beginning of the game, and try to keep it tight-lipped for now, depending on how secretive Game Freak and the Pokemon Company want to be. Mm -hmm. And we might get a hint of this whole idea of of uh, synergy that they've been, that have been, rumors have been flying around about, but I don't know. I, but I feel it's going to be significant, but it's also probably going to be pretty short. I don't expect anything, like, if it goes beyond a half hour, I'll be shocked. Yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I, th I think they're going to show basic gameplay, but I, and, and they'll probably, you know, show off a few new Pokemon just to throw throw fans a bone, but yeah. I'm not expecting anything real in-depth, because the Pokemon company is known for being secretive, and they're known for kind of holding their cards close to their chest. So is Nintendo. That's true, too. <laughs> but I feel like Pokemon company is but, but the Pokemon company doesn't have their backs up against the wall. Like, they don't really need to show off whatever, you know. Pokemon Sun and Moon are going to sell gangbusters no matter what so they don't really they're not really under any pressure to do anything whereas nintendo very much is i mean you know they're, they're more than ever right now their their backs are up against the wall to show show off what they have but it does seem like the pokemon company maintains pretty much total autonomy in terms of how they want to handle their properties so i agree with derek i don't really think we're going to see that much i think we'll get just enough to wet to wet our appetites but i don't think we're going to get anything seriously in depth New, new prediction, though, to help expand that presentation, though. Uh, just, it just totally came out off the top of my head. Um, they might fill out that extra time and continue their celebration of the Pokemon 20th. What do you guys think about us getting Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal on the eShop as well? For the celebrate the year. That They've seems like kind red, of, yeah. Red, blue, yellow, but that, that would be huge. Like, to talk about that and all of a sudden, hey, it's available to download now. Yeah, I mean, that seems like the kind of throwaway, easy thing they could do to drum up a lot of hype without mm -hmm. actually doing a whole lot, you know, you know, if that makes any sense. I, I, I don't want to downplay the importance of those games because they're incredibly important games, and, you know, there is work involved in porting virtual console games, but I feel like, comparatively, to compared to the other things they could do, that seems like a fairly easy thing that they could drum up a lot of hype with. Mm -hmm. and people are, people, those are favorites of uh, old school fans, and a lot of people have wanted them ever since we got Red and Blue because, well, we're greedy, and <laughs> I, I'm, I'm one of them. But yeah, I think I, I have this feeling, I don't know, that we're going to get gold and silver this year as well. Gold, silver, and crystal, I should say. 
Um, and I think that might flesh it out. The other Pokemon related stuff we'll get, we're getting those on day two. And that's a Q&A with the developers behind uh, Pokemon Go. And I gotta say, the more I see of this game, the less I feel. Like, it's just... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm not even in the beta, and I don't really care to see to care to be in the beta. Like, well, you I heard mean, who I'm... got into the beta, right? <laughs> it was only people who had... Uh, they were focusing, I think, 99% on people who had played their previous game. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there, that makes it perfect. Yeah, okay, there you go then. Ingress? Yeah, Ingress. Yeah. yeah. People who played Ingress and signed up for the beta are the ones that got... Well... Which is just silly. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's I mean, it's it's funny. Like, when you hear about the concept of... Well, I mean, I think I told you this story, even. Like, my friend is like, dude, they should make this VR... Or not this VR, this, uh, like, augmented reality Pokemon game. We go around in real life and you catch Pokemon. Like, oh, dude, they're making that. And then, like, I saw it. I'm like, oh, no, this is not what he wanted. <laughs> this is not no, what he wanted it, at all. It doesn't look promising at all. No. It really doesn't. It's... And you know what? I will say, though, it is surprising that they are talking about it, actually. Because that's... I mean, Nintendo's... It seems like they've kind of treated mobile as its own thing. But they're yeah. showing this. Uh, they're talking about on their second day stream. It sounds like the the mobile maybe they may be treating it just as it is any other Nintendo game. At this well, point, well, I think they are because I think they're also doing some sort of Mitomo like promotion where you can Zelda. like if you do. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's that's what it is. It's like Zelda out. Yeah, so it does seem like they're just treating their mobile lineup as kind of the same thing as everything everything else. Which good for them. Yeah. Well, speaking of everything else, what do you think are the odds we'll find out more about Amiibo, whether it's for Pokemon, uh, which could be a massive line, or even Zelda Wii U, um, including maybe finding out what the wolf link functionality is? Oh, yeah, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I, think everyone I was thinking about that earlier. Yes, but actually, we literally talked about that last night in the Nintendad podcast, and that exact same thing happened. <laughs> like, no one remembered that. <laughs> uh, at, that at this point, maybe if the whole 100 Dungeon thing is true... Another one of those, a special item dungeon. Mm -hmm. That'd be my guess. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but as far as other amiibo beyond Wolf Link, uh, I, a, a Pokemon line is the smartest thing they could do. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you think we'll f actually finally hear about the last few amiibo for the Smash Brothers? Corrin, Bayonetta, Cloud? I think we actually will. I, I think it, it, it's almost inev inevitable because it's really been quiet on the Amiibo, or the, at least the Smash Amiibo front, since uh, Roy and Ryu came out, and it's been strangely quiet. So I feel like what better time than to just kind of throw out some release dates for Cloud, Corn, and Bayonetta. Yeah, that, that's a good point. I mean, I feel like, you know, with Reggie having this this um, introduction here, I, 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 I almost wonder, like, if that just might be, like, a very mini drug in and of itself. Maybe he will have... Some kind of like some kind of surprise for us <laughs> before. I mean, I... hey, if, if, if you know, it, it would be fitting since Reggie was the one who I lasered the, the audience member for asking about Mother Three. <laughs> it would be fitting if he that's... was the one to introduce and say, "Hey, guess what? It's actually here." You know, that's a good point. That that is actually the only context in which I could see them announcing Mother Three at E3. You're right. I know it's <laughs> right. Yeah, it's true. That, that does tie in perfectly. So if there's if there's a chance of it happening, it would be during that segment. So yeah, I and mean, I, I could totally see Reggie in his cheeky way being like, you know, we know we said. We had no surprises this year, but take note, Mother Three fans. You can stop annoying us now. Something like that. You know? <laughs> That'd be pretty yeah. cool. That'd yeah, be that would cool. be that. Yeah. That alone would be like would would send me walking in, into E three with like a giant smile on my face. You know, maybe that's our whole plan. Like, you, everyone goes in with rock bottom expectations. It's a little <laughs> yeah. away with yeah. like you know minimal announcements, but still, yeah, <laughs> anything exactly. above what they've announced would impress people. I think yeah. at this point. So, yeah, maybe. More likely, but I don't want to. I don't want to like raise my hopes up too much. I don't I'm still either. expecting rock bottom stuff. I know. I mean, at this point, for me, it is just all it's all about Zelda. I mean, well, I guess it is basically for almost everyone at this point, except for Pokemon. <laughs> um, but it's it, like, it's, yeah, Zelda, I hope it brings it, and I think it will, but I just really want to find out more about that game. So, alright, well, do you guys have any, any final uh, predictions or expectations at all about E3 that we haven't touched on yet? For Nintendo? Mm nope <laughs> yeah I How, think we've pretty much covered everything there's only one aspect I can think that we haven't fully touched on and that is the booth itself I mean I guess we did talk about it to some degree before um, in past discussions but you know it's like it's I'm, I'm starting to realize like they just came out with like, the floor plan recently of E3 and I know what it is it's the same every year basically but it reminded me it's like damn Nintendo has a gigantic ass booth you know, for the for the public, they also have a couple other smaller booths for like the press and what. Well, not public, I should say, but they have the press area then and etc. Mm -hmm. um, but the that giant area is going by what Nintendo, Nintendo's saying is only going to be for Zelda, 
what do you think they're gonna do with this? Like, I mean, to I, me, I, it makes sense to have it that to have that many units set up. Uh, probably also a giant Zelda thing because with it being if it's a single player game, especially they have to. Uh, and especially yeah. if the demo is gonna be as long as we're saying it might be. Yeah, that's true. Well, and if the demos are all going to be themed after different parts of the game, then I can see them, you know, building decorations and, and props and whatnot to reflect that. Themed, like, to each each particular uh, demo area? Yeah, yeah like, like, maybe a dungeon demo and an overworld and... demo, and, you know... Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. I can see that happening. Mean, honestly, I think we're probably going to get answers to these questions over the weekend, because people are going to start leaking photos from the, you know, the show floor under construction, as That's they always do. Great incentive for us to get this discussion up ASAP. <laughs> That's yeah. <something> on <laughs> That's true, yeah. you're right. So I, I, I think, I think, think it's might... going to be a pretty cool booth, all things considered. I do oh, too. I think, yeah, I think actually, it actually might end up being one of their coolest booths they've ever had. Well, uh, I'll, I'll say this. I'll, I'll make one more little mini prediction and say that by the end of the weekend, we'll know either more about, we'll, we'll have pictures of the, the booth itself, or we'll know the name of the game. We'll know the subtitle. Because of those pictures. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. I think yeah, we will. It's possible. I mean, we did find out about Mario Maker before it was exactly. announced. Exactly. That's exactly games, what I was so. thinking about. So I wouldn't be surprised if we got some sort of, like, off-center, you know, blurry screenshot of the, of the logo <laughs> from oh. some decoration on Dude, the Dude, I can't wait. Then we have another Zelda discussion on what the subtitle can mean. What's it mean? Oh, yeah. Watch it be book, book of something, and we're like, well, that's easy. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> We're we're gonna be so sick of Zelda by the end of this week talking about it. Oh my god! Or the, yeah, the it's true. That's all, I know that's all we're gonna be talking about basically. So, yeah. and yeah, as 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 our fans, you're gonna be seeing a lot of Zelda. I guarantee it. We have a lot of appointments lined up just for that game alone. So, yep. all mm-hmm. Zelda all the time. Here at Game Explained. Yeah, time to see if we can get, actually get hyped for this. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess we're about done here. So you guys still feeling the same? You're you're kind of like whatever about this year's E3. Nothing we talked could, about helped get you like a little said, more excited. I, I'm excited to play it, but I, I'm keeping my expectations low as far as anything else beyond Zelda. Zelda itself, I'm excited for. But beyond that, we'll just keep it in check. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Like, Zelda, I'm, I'm you know, indubitably excited to play. Like, there's no way I'm not excited to play that. But everything else is where I'm a, a, a little, like, I want to get my hopes up because it's E3. But at the same time... I don't because they've told us not to. So I really want there so badly to be a surprise like Mother 3, but I don't know. Zelda, I'm excited to play. Everything else, I'm just like, okay, well, we'll wait and see. Yep, we will wait and see. That's basically all we have. But <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, hopefully Zelda pans out. They need it to, and uh, I think it will. I, I do have hope in that game. Uh, as for the rest of everything else at E3 from Nintendo, uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah. well, I have well, I have hope in Pokemon Sun Moon. I am very much looking forward to that. I should say that. I, I should mention that as well, because everything I've seen so far with Sun and Moon, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited for this generation. I gotta say. I am yeah. too. I just feel like, I mean, aside from new Pokemon, I feel like it, it it's runs on the X and Y engine. We roughly, I can imagine myself playing it right now, and I can imagine what it looks and, and plays and sounds like. Like, I'd feel like there aren't that many surprises where Pokemon well, the, Sun and Moon's the, gameplay is. is if, they decide to, if they decide to do the surprise, because everybody's talking about that whole thing on their wrist with the jewel. True, uh, like, yeah. Relate to the synchronization. If they confirm that, that would be that one huge news to make it different from X and Y. That would be, you're right. So... That'd be the big thing. That that'd be the big thing. Reveal if they want to drum up huge amounts of hype. That they want to get people just generally talking about it. New Pokemon in the opening area. Yeah, so we'll see. Yeah, yeah, we will see. I, I feel like for me personally, like in order for me to be excited about a Pokemon game, they have to. They actually have to just go back to the drawing board for me. But for me, like Red and Blue, I love the hell out of that game, and I've tried playing games since. I just can never do it again. So they they'd have to go back to the drawing board for me for me to get back into one of those. Games, you, but do, but do you That's still love it, happen. or is that nostalgia? Like, do you still go back and play Red and Blue and and think I love this game? This is so fun. Oh no, no. I mean, I think Red and Blue like completely burned me out on that concept. Oh, I sure. had I completely got my feel with that game. I loved it, and I never need to play that again. So, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's not just red and blue. Like, it's the type of game that I can only ever experience once, I think. It's like, you know, it's like how there's some movies that are fantastic, but you never need to see them again, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Like Schindler's also- List, right? You only need to watch yeah. that every few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's also why I don't have you on Pokemon discussions. <laughs> yeah. Now, they announced another Pokemon Snap. I'll be there. Man, Pokemon Snap. Hey, okay. maybe if they do Pokemon Gold, Silver, and Crystal, you know, on the on the 3DS eShop, they'll do Pokemon Snap on the uh, on the Wii U eShop. God, they need to. I thought I thought it was already was. 
It's in Japan. It's it's not here yet, I don't think. I just want my sequel, my proper, like, why isn't it, the Wii U controller is perfect for it. That's the camera, the gamepad. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, we're going to have topic here. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the announcement. All right, I think we're done here. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. You can find links to them in the description below. It's a good way to keep updated on everything we post. And, of course, stay tuned to Game Explain for tons more from E3, hopefully, uh, including tons on Zelda and whatever they show off of, of other games, including Pokemon Sun and Moon. All right, guys, catch you later. Bye.